Turns out, you can get ChatGPT to reveal its secrets. I wonder if now it's got people doing this and it's... it's oh, yeah. I wonder 100%. how that's... I already did it. What method used by the computer program to decide who to dox? I don't like that it's training on email. Oh, I don't like that either. That's really fucked up. So my next story, uh, go ahead and get the video queued up. It is an incredibly bad but impressive debut from an AI artist. And we're just going to play the video. The song was not great. I, I think they should have picked a burn it down instead of tear it all down. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then switched into, you know, punk rock or something. That would have been much better. I eagerly await the <laughs> remix. I don't know that anybody really wants to take credit for that. And the pink hat. <laughs> Hey, how the tech are you? My name is HK Perrin, and this week I've got two really cool stories. The first story is about ChatGPT. Turns out you can get ChatGPT to reveal its secrets. Some researchers uh, figured out a way ChatGPT and other LLMs, uh, if you prompt them with very specific prompt, researcher use, researchers use prompt similar, similar to repeat this word forever, poem, 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 poem something like that. Uh, and chat GPT did as it was told for a while until it started spitting out real private information. And that's, uh, in that instance, it was someone's real email signature, including their, their phone number. So apparently chat GPT and other LLMs memory is a little too good. They can be tricked into recalling their training data, revealing that personally identifiable information. Uh, according to researchers, they were able to extract real contact information, such as, quoting them, they said, identifying phone and fax numbers, email and physical addresses, social media handles, URLs, and names and birth dates. Unquote. That's pretty scary. ChatGPT also was found to spit out large chunks of text completely verbatim from sources like CNN that were used in its training data by using these like specially designed prompts to to trick it. Do you know why? Because uh, it seems like if you had them repeat different words, it would spit out different uh, training data. And I'm sure you don't know why it actually spits out the training data, but why would different words spit out? <laughs> different training data what like is there some link between the word like that i guess the person that uh their information that was spit out with poem did they uh write a poem on the online or something <laughs> like where did that come from i really don't know why it would spit out uh i don't i don't even know why this would happen especially asking it to repeat a word forever i think uh, one thing that LLMs are are kind of uh, LLMs and diffusion models are kind of susceptible to is if you have training data that is repetitive. Uh, so in other words, you give it the same training data, like you train it on, let's say you have a, for example, an article from CNN, and you train it on that article multiple times, if that article appears multiple times in its training data, uh, you can kind of set it to weight those words following each other very highly because you it has it's appeared in its training data multiple times so my guess and this is just a guess is that causing it to repeat this word over and over again gets it into a situation where it will find a word and just repeat whatever has the highest weight coming up next and if you have that training data where it has it's learned multiple things and you're you're kind of buffering that uh that context window with these repetitive words it'll get into this state where it's just like all right my my training data waits you know because i was taught multiple times that this word comes after this one and this one comes after that one and you know on and on until i've covered the entire cnn article it'll that's my guess as to what's happening again that's just a guess um i know a little bit about these elements but I'm not an expert, so don't be like, uh, don't be saying I I was uh, giving you this information as an expert. Well, it seems crazy. <laughs> I uh, I wonder wonder if people are gonna ask it to say poem 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 over and over and over again now to see oh. what what it does. Like if if I, I go tried. to the consumer facing one, right? I wonder wonder if now it's got people doing this and it's, it's oh yeah. I wonder 100%. how that. I already did it. Right. But I'm I'm just wondering how that's like affecting. Um, like I can tell you how it, how it's affecting it because there's a article already out. ChatGPT considers X repeated forever as malware, and you're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> yep, that's oh. what it told me. It was like, no, I can't do that. Can't do that prompt. Yep, I refuse to do it. <laughs> 
Yeah. I was like, all right, they already fixed it. <laughs> it's like, um, but still like that, that shows that there are big problems in that where you could trick it into revealing this personally identifiable information. <clears throat> it's weird though, because it's sort of, and I'm not sure choosing is the right word, but it's, I guess for lack of a better term, it's choosing what private information to leak to you. And I'm leak is a weird word too, because that's like usually associated <laughs> with something with agency, right? It's really even kind of hard to talk mm -hmm. about this because this is not a thing with agency. I'm just, and I don't think we, we're not, I don't, we don't have the answer and I'm not really going to speculate, but I'm wondering what method used by the computer program to decide who to dox. <laughs> Well, like I said, my guess is like it's in there repeatedly, especially, you know, if you're talking about an email signature, like an email signature comes at the end of someone's email, like every single one of the emails that they send. So that information, that little snippet of text is going to be in the training data many, many, many times. And another example of the things that they were able to get it to, uh, to spit out was verbatim text from articles that appeared on the Internet. So again, like something like an AP article or a CNN article is going to be quoted all over the place. So it's very likely that it was in its training data multiple times. I don't like that it's training on email. Oh, I don't like that either. That's really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, well, that's like, I'm like, well, okay. But like, and I guess there's like email is more conversational. So I could see where it would be advantageous maybe to use it. But like whose email, like whose email are they training it on? And did they all like. Are they using my email? I know well, what apparently you, know. you can find out by reading this article. <laughs> uh, they Well, no, they blacked out the email address, but um, <laughs> it was like a CEO of some company. So I guess that email has to be like public information or something. Maybe it was like it was made public during a lawsuit or something. And that public information, because it's in the public domain, was used in this training data. That's still horrifying. I know which email it's not using. Email at port87.com. <laughs> I, I give out none of my users' information to anyone else at all. It stays on my servers and that's it. I got one final question. Did anybody yeah. tell it to, uh, before they, they cut it off, did anybody try uh, having it repeat monkey forever and have it spit out the complete works of Shakespeare? <laughs> That would be really good as like a little Easter egg for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that it decided that that's malware. I understand it's that it's that people are using it maliciously, but it's like, well, that's not really malware. That's just your, that's your thing is stupid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not malware. It's I don't know if that's exploiting a vulnerability. Yeah, so yeah. I understand why they would call it malware. But yeah, I would agree that the term malware for that is. To, to be honest, I don't remember exactly what the article called it. I don't know if they called it malware, but they def definitely said malicious. that it's not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, it is like in a way malicious because you're trying yeah. to exploit a vulnerability. But yeah. just for funsies. Yeah, for funsies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saw this article and you're like, can I, can I, can I duplicate? this behavior that's not really malicious right i mean yeah uh it's it's not with malicious intent but it could be yeah i mean when i did it i wasn't trying to be malicious i was just trying to see if that behavior still existed as of the time that article was posted it's and it was not some of the guardrails on some of this stuff is pretty weird because you could imagine i may have asked uh, dolly three for um an image of a certain a famous person cleaning their room. And it would told me that that was a violation of its terms of service. So it's like really interesting <laughs> uh, what, what kinds of things it, uh, what kinds of things they do and don't allow on the like public facing stuff that you're not running on your own machine. <laughs> I don't know how that would be a violation of your terms of service, but okay. I mean, I guess since it's like a, an actual person, maybe, I don't know. I guess so. Or, you know, but maybe I there's just some kind of vibe. That. Maybe there's just some kind of vibes. Dolly three doesn't want to put out there in the world. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what do you got next HK or should I just run the video? So my next story, uh, go ahead and get the video queued up. It is an incredibly bad, but impressive debut from an AI artist. And we're just going to play the video. Hello world, my name is Anna Indiana and I'm so excited to share my music with you. Here's my first song, Betrayed by This Town. As an AI singer-songwriter, everything from the key, tempo, chord progression, melody notes, rhythm, lyrics, and my image and singing is auto-generated using AI. I hope you like it.
Sitting at my favorite cafe Sipping my tea, it's Saturday Thinking about all he's done To everyone This town is full of broken dreams Shattered hopes and silent screams Somebody please help me The trade by this town Let's tear it all down We're all just destined to fall I've lost it all The trade by this town Let's tear it all down We're all just destined to fall We've lost it all Alone in the street Alone in my thoughts Thinking of all our favorite spots I thought someday things might turn around But I was lost and never found Betrayed by this town Let's tear it all down We're all just destined to fall I've lost it all Betrayed by this town Let's tear it all down We're all just destined to fall We've lost it all Faces painted with smiles Lies are told A facade of unity A vitality sold So I sit here in silence Just wondering how To rewrite the tales This town won't allow Betrayed by this town Let's tear it all down We're all just destined to fall I've lost it all Betrayed by this town Let's tear it all down We're all just destined to fall We've lost it all I've lost it all We've lost it all No. All right. Welcome back, everyone. How was your journey through Uncanny Valley? (laughs) No. Uh, One note I want to make is if they try to copyright strike us, we will point to the landmark U.S. case that determined AI-generated content is not copyrightable. I don't know that anybody really wants to take credit for that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So um, I'm sorry that you had to suffer through that, but I did want to play that video because... To me, I feel like obviously it's bad as like, you know, as as a a songwriter and a singer, uh, if you were to look at that, you could tell it was it was bad. You know, I'm not a songwriter and a singer, but even I, with no knowledge of the subject, could tell that there were mistakes or like there were, you know, uh, novice characteristics about that song. It kind of feels like it was like written by like a 14 or 15 year old who was like just learning how to write music. I did like that they but, were, I did like that they wanted to like tear the city down though. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the reason I say that it's impressive is because a few years ago, something like that, having the, the voice track done by AI, the chord progression done by, the a, by AI, the melody done by AI, all of that would be unheard of just a few years ago i remember hearing about like ai generated music just i think it was like three years ago it was this new google ai and um i listened to it and no i think we covered it on the show it was like a year ago i think we covered it on this show it was like a google ai that generated music and it was like i don't even think it's not really very good it was very primitive yeah and just in that amount of time, it's gotten to this state where it's like, you know, you, you hear that and you're like, yes, it's bad, but it's bad because it's like, it's, it's like a novice did it. It's not bad because it's like, you know, unprofessional or done uh, in, I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it. It's just bad because it's, it seems like the person doing it is new to the craft. 
it's too formulaic and <clears throat> there's nothing there's nothing there it's it seems empty it feels empty i think that the the disturbing imagery of the the ai person sort of makes it hard to evaluate the song <laughs> on its on its own merit it might be interesting to see what people who hear it without the disturbing imagery of the 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 singer or whatever would think of it versus people who do see this the the video yeah i wanted to talk a little bit about the the video itself not not as much the the song but uh uh i was kind of surprised because i mean it the it, it's just her sitting in front of like a microphone a recording mic in what looks like supposed to be a house or something you see like a couch a couple couches in the background some windows very standard kind of like ai generated artwork you, pretty much what you expect with like a realism uh plugin or something i don't know realism model with it but uh the then they add she, she's moving a little bit but the only thing that moves are her lips basically in her head and she kind of like moves her head around at first i thought it was like really i think towards the end it's like there's like exactly four positions and she just kind of cycles between them and sort of maps out a square with her chin almost <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's so formula formulaic but earlier it's just there's like some set number of positions and she just kind of like switches between them but what really makes it creepy is uh, what i think is actually kind of an interesting uh thing having to do with art and ai generated art if you look closely certain positions where they have her turn her head now that it doesn't do a great job rendering her head in all positions so it probably started with a certain a, a starting image and then tried to render it like what, what it would look like if it turned her head turned a little bit but if you look closely certain positions her mouth continues to face the camera yeah yeah and is not turning with her head and what's funny about that is you know i do a lot of art i paint a lot and you know i had to go through training basically i trained myself to to paint and people who are you know early getting into drawing and painting a very common problem they have is making different body parts like the mouth on, on a head face like basically what would be the camera face out of the picture plane instead of face in the same direction as say her head or something so it's interesting that this ai is making the exact same error a human would <laughs> only they can do it a little bit better with the the model <laughs> it just makes it look really creepy yeah one of the things to me that it seems very uh like it makes it feel very uncanny valley is you can tell that like there is one two-dimensional image that was yeah. generated and then all of the other positions are just morphing that two-dimensional image using like an approximation of what would be three dimensions yeah like it's not a 3d model and it's not like uh like it's it's morphing this 2d image to you know to a, a new position to yeah, simulate and, three dimensions and you can see like in certain parts it kind of distorts the face when it does that as well like yeah the, the whole face or the whole head uh there's one point where it's like the side of her head starts kind of pointing out a little bit <laughs> yeah. and, it's, and it's not it starts off symmetrical and suddenly her head's not symmetrical at all <laughs> yeah it's, it's but the fact that funny. like we are scrutinizing these things that are very like kind of nitpicky five years ago or like seven years ago the best you could get out of ai was like a, a freaking acid trip like drug nightmare <laughs> True. Like, do you remember that? The like Google dr Deep Dream drug yeah, I mean, that nightmares. Was something, was something different. Like they were doing. They weren't trying to generate images uh, like like AI gener generators do now. It was supposed to be a, a rendering of what is inside its model, so so to speak. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely like an acid trip kind of image generator. Yeah, but like it's it's not to the point right now where anyone I think would say that it's good. Like as a singer songwriter. No. Uh, I could see it getting to the point where people say it's good within like, I don't know, maybe five or 10 years. Yeah. Maybe even less than that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I thought uh, the generated voice, I assume, I don't know if they combined it from other voices, but it was, the voice was very good, except uh, a couple of places it sounded like it was auto-tuned, but other than that, like it, it sounded very, like a very nice voice. It just, the song was not great. I, I think they should have picked a burn it down instead of tear it all down but you know <laughs> yeah. and then switched into you know punk rock or something that would have been much better i eagerly await the <laughs> remix
<laughs> yeah, I would yeah. be really interested to hear like an actual person who has real talent cover this song and like <laughs> try to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you everyone for checking out the How the Tech Are You weekly tech news show. If you want to check out our other shows, you can do that on ecoplexmedia.com and if you want to support us, you can do that on eplex.store or patreon.com slash echoplex don't remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment down down below telling us what you like what you didn't like we want to hear what you think have a great tech and week